Welcome back, guys. We got a few days to uh, we got a few days to kill until um, we're gonna be playing the new Amnesia game that's coming out next week or this week when this video comes out. Um, so we got a couple days to kill since we finished Bolt Gun last week, and I wasn't exactly sure what to play, and I've been getting the feeling I, you know I played Hearts of Iron Four the other day on stream and. Um, for a little bit and i wanted to i enjoy this game i want to play it some more if you're not familiar with hearts of iron 4 uh it's made by Par paradox uh interactive and it's similar to well they've made a bunch of games in the same vein uh crusader kings uh europa universalis victoria hearts of iron 4 and stellaris and they are I think they're considered 4x games essentially it's um you can think of it as like civilized sid meyer's civilization but uh, mixed with like a almost a real-time strategy game uh kind of so and in this one this one takes place in world war ii what's cool about the paradox those that line of paradox games is that you can play each one and have your save file carry over to the next game uh if you own them all and if you want to do such a thing i've never done that before i don't own all those games um and i think it's kind of i think it's a little bit of a hassle in order to do that but hearts of iron 4 is very fun i played crusader kings and i played stellaris which is like the sci-fi one so what we're gonna do and what we did um <clears throat> on stream we're gonna take this little wheel here we're going to spin the wheel. We're going to pick a country. We have two starting dates. We're going to start in 1936 uh, instead of 39. So let's open this up. See ourselves the world map here. So essentially we can pick any country. Hold on. Let me get that wheel back up. See what we get. <clears throat> no Pacific Islands, please. Oh, Ecuador. Okay. All right. South America's fun. Uh, Ecuador, Ecuador. Okay. So we can maybe go for Peru, Bolivia. All right. We could do South America. The problem with South America is just ensuring that uh, you don't get the United States to to attack. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't think I've ever done Ecuador before. I've done Brazil. I've done Venezuela. I think I've done Colombia. So we're going to start in 1936. <clears throat> There's going to be a couple things we're going to take a look at here. We're going to take a look at our industry. How good it is. It's not going to be good. Probably because we're a tiny country. Um, we have very little manpower in order to recruit for our army. We have 24,000 people. First thing we're going to do is research. We're going to get this to boost our research speed a little bit. And then we're going to do the industry and machine tools to boost our production. We have one spot available. We have four factories here. We have one military factory. What does our focus look like? Okay, so this is the default national focus tree. So we're gonna do the whole industry line here and we'll gain a bunch of factories. 100% research bonus there. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's make a military factory. We gain a little oil. What's our supply looking like here? All right, interesting. Interesting. All right, we're gonna build infrastructure, but we're probably never gonna get to that. What's our unit look like here? This is our base infantry unit. We've got three. We got three battalions in our infantry uh, division here. All right, we'll train two of them. We have one. We have no field commander. 
All right, we have to promote. Andre Arte Arteaga. Welcome. You are now the general of our army. All right, we have Peru to the south. Democracies can't justify war goals against countries that have not generated world tension. We need okay, so we're we're gonna not be a democracy. Uh, uh, we need uh, we need a little resources. We need steel in order to make our basic infantry equipment. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna force our country to go fascist. We need a hundred. 50 political power in order to recruit this guy, David Blanco. And David Blanco is going to gain daily fascism support uh, plus 0.1. So that's what we're going to do. Our army is going to consist of three divisions, pretty much. All right, we're going to need we're going to need a lot of political power because we're going to have to conscript. We're going to have to conscript from the population. We have to change our economy. This military factory is going to get done on the 6th of October, 1937. All right, that's a... Might as well be decades from now. We're making six infantry equipment per day. That's terrible. Actually, honestly... Oh, I can't even do that. I can't make the division smaller. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're going to focus construction effort. So we build things faster. Turkey remilitarizes remilitar the Turkish Straits. We're going to get mechanical engineering done. Once this is done, we're going to go into construction and do some more construction. We have convoys, but we have no... Dockyards. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Let's do construction. Military core. Um. No. No, we have to save our political power. So what we're going to aim to do is. Aim to go fascist, take Peru, Colombia. Is Peru being, uh... The independence of Peru is guaranteed by the United States. Everybody is, right? Everybody down here is guaranteed by the United States, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to get into war with the United States. <laughs> Essentially, there might be a way around it. Um, right, basic machining tools is done. Fantastic. We're going to do dispersed industry. That gives us more room, which means we'll be able to build more factories on the on our little tile there. We gain our, our second. All right. Let's go fascist. We got our second infantry division. So, how are we going to do this? How are we going to expand? We either have to bide our time until World War II kicks off. And do improved machining tools. Machining tools increases the efficiency of the military factories. So now there's this little red bar. And now, even though we still have the one factory, <clears throat> they're going to start producing more equipment per day. It goes up every day. Let's do the infrastructure. Let's max ourselves out on the infrastructure. So yeah, I think we need to... 
wait until World War II kicks off and then we can join the Axis and start a whole mess down in South America maybe but we're not going to have a whole lot of units is the thing and the rest of South America is probably going to be pissed off at us so we will see yes now we're out of manpower We only have six, 6,500 soldiers. <clears throat> Alright, we're going to open up the local discourse. Like Galapagos Islands. Oh, we got the Galapagos Islands. Interesting. Uh, I guess I mean yeah we want to do this so we can get the extra research slot I don't think the Galapagos does nothing for us that's kind of cool though next we're going to get limited conscription to increase our manpower We need, what, 150 in order to do that? Yeah. This will allow us to build more factories in our country. Uh, we'll do construction two. Yep, I can build one more. We're going to do civilian. Honestly, we're only going to be producing military uh, infantry equipment. <clears throat> That's all we're going to be able to get to do for a while. All right, extra research slot. We only have 600 men to pull from. Let's change this color. Oh, we can change the government. All right, limited conscription. That barely increased our manpower. Increased it by 1%. Oh, there we go. All right. All right, dispersed industry two. So again, the machining tools. Production efficiency cap is now 70%, so we'll be producing at max. We'll get to like 10 infantry equipment per day. Which actually would be pretty good. We could take Peru, too. We could definitely take Peru right now. There, we got our second factory. So now we'll be producing, now that we have two factories there, we'll produce like maybe up to upwards of 30 a day. Oh, we got the extra research slot. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's do, let's do more infantry equipment. We'll get the upgraded version. Nice. All right, we're getting more men into the military. Excellent. How's our politics looking? All right, we're getting there. We're almost a, we're almost fascist. We can region wide region wide industrial integration gives us one more building slot on our country. Uh, we might save that though. All right, we're gaining a bunch of infantry equipment. Spectacular. This is going to get done. Give us more, two more civilian factories. I guess... <clears throat> I guess we build a supply depot next. I run a rail yard over there. Oh, we're going to need trains. Okay, we'll have to research trains.
All right, this will give us a military factory. All right, Japan and China are popping off. It looks like the Hindenburg did not explode there. Uh, yes, compassion. Captain of industry. Need more war support there. All right, let's get the captain of industry. So what? what? Can we build any factories on the Galapagos? No, we can't. And the Galapagos has almost max infrastructure. Interesting. Can we build a dockyard on the Galapagos? No, there's nothing we can do with them. Okay. All right. All this construction is just boosting our construction speed. What we're going to do next is research trains. Because we need trains to run supplies. This little thing is a supply hub. You can see here we have two and we're going to build a third one here. You need supply hubs close. <clears throat> you need them like around your country. Slash close to the front lines in order to supply your troops. Um, and in order to connect our capital, which is here, Quito. Um, you have to run railways. So we need trains in order to run the supplies, which is what these two things would be doing. We actually have government controls, actually no trains, so... If war were to come, we wouldn't be able to give our men supplies. All right. Better infantry equipment. More, more military factories. All right, so what we could do now is... Uh, actually, let's do radio. A little bonus to our troops. Reorganize the railway system. Yeah, supply hub construction speed. We'll do that once we hit that. Waiting for trains to get done. This is going to give us one more military factory, and we're going to use that to make trains. <clears throat> All right, we got a bunch of PP. Um, we'll hold. We're still a ways from being fascist. Oh, wow, none of this is for infantry, huh? That's not good. Army offense. Let's take that. Offense. All right, six divisions. I mean, we'll... We'll draw the battle lines for Peru. So we set the front line and the uh, game automatically distributes uh, kind of like a balance, you know, balances your troops along the, along the uh, front line there. And then you draw where you want them to attack with the battle line. Let's get a little more military factory. Uh, we're going to hold off on using that. You draw with the offensive line. What zones you want to take. And then the game uh, calculates how your army's going to do it. Essentially plans it out. More or less. And you can micromanage these guys. Uh, which is good. Which we will wind up doing. Probably. Alright. Trains are done. Just gonna get you on advanced machining tools and we're gonna start building some trains. Now we're a little more, Peru's like a little more equal with us. This little red and green bar down here kind of would determine our success. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to like take that for its word. But it does say 
the enemy is stronger from what I can tell although I don't think the enemy is actually stronger ah well they well, got some artillery there yeah okay so the enemy's got some enemy might actually be stronger than us perhaps Colombia would be a better target we're just gonna keep upgrading our infantry weapons because that's all we got now we're gonna do political effort. Ah, uh, we need more. We need more steel. Uh, what do you guys have for? Oh, that's not gonna show me what they have. Where can we see raw materials? Resources. Columbia has oil. Peru has oil and. Tungsten. No one down here has steel, huh? Aluminum, aluminum. Brazil probably does. Yeah, down south. Argentina. Uruguay. Paraguay. Bolivia. Alright. Yeah, I mean, we want to take... We do want to take Peru. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> we could do mechanical computing, which will boost our research speed a little bit more. I think we'll just do that. We're kind of stuck because we can't actually do... Can't actually make anything. <clears throat> we're just, we're not going to get enough factories to make like artillery or trucks or support equipment or airplanes or a navy or any like anything um i think i think we just have to do infantry equipment all right we have to wait till we get fascism uh we'll do construction and building the supply hub right now. So we're going to do reorganize the railway system and we're going to do region wide integration as well. And we're going to build another factory there. So in the end, we, we actually did wind up with a good number of factors. This will be done June of 38. Okay. matter here not enough manpower oh we're literally at zero we have no more manpower we're literally waiting for the kids to grow up get out of school all right all right we gotta take our eight little divisions and um <clears throat> hope we can capture i wonder if columbia would be easier What do we know about Colombia? Eleven to thirteen factories. Seventy six K to one hundred twenty K. Eleven K to eight. OK, so it does look like Peru. Five to twelve five. A one to eight. Interesting. So Colombia does have a smaller army. As far as we know, as far as our intelligence knows. I 
it might be easier to get Columbia. And then I'll just nab us some more industrial power and manpower. We don't want any of these. Uh, no, we have to wait till we get to the fascist government. Yeah, let's get this compassion gentleman. Okay. We're almost there. We can discredit the government. Will reduce the popularity and democracy, lower stability, which is fine. Just lowers our stability by one percent, so we're not actually losing. This is our stability up here. We're not actually taking a hit. Let's do that. Let's discredit the government. Now the fascists have uh, fifty percent. All right, let's get the grand battle plan. Learn ourselves how to do trench warfare. Our supply hub's almost done. Fantastic. We have nine trains in the entire country. Owned by the government. Fascist assault divisions formed. Political and the martial have always been intertwined to fashion in parallel with its growing political movements. Fascist parties have begun to form paramilitary organizations to protect against both internal and external threats. The internal threats being their political opponents. Although many people find this development worrying, the wave of militaristic furor has led to an increased amount of volunteers joining our armed forces. Political leaders of the movement have pointed out that the response... Oh, okay. So we're going to gain more manpower, possibly? All right, so we're going to hold the referendum. We're not going to have a civil war. We're waiting until we get to 100 PP. We'll hold the referendum. And we'll declare ourselves fascist. Let's start doing some more. Uh, now we can't do that yet. <clears throat> Nice, we got 450 more soldiers. <laughs> this poor, this division. Oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna screw it out. There's one more. All right, we got nine divisions in our army. Fantastic. And we're gonna hold the referendum here. Fashion is becoming more and more popular in Ecuador. Oh, I didn't mean to. Uh, we clicked the wrong one. All right, well. The pop-up pushed it down. All right. Let's get construction. All right, we gotta wait till we get a, to 100 PP again. Then we can hold the referendum. Our base stability is it's plummeted, which is not good. All right, hold national referendum. And now we are fascist. Let's get the collectivist ethos. Reduce the popularity and democracy. <clears throat> now we could theoretically declare war on anybody problem is the United States our the United States are guaranteeing the independence of every country in South America. So how do we get around this? How do we not...
how do we not get into war with the United States? Like we could scoop up those three if we could get over there. Hmm. Maybe we just go for it. Just go for Colombia. We need to get a little pee pee. I mean, if we do it fast enough, 62, 62 more pee pee. <clears throat> If we can take Colombia fast enough, the United States won't be able to do anything to help them. And then from there... From there we try Venezuela, and we try the same thing. Perhaps. It's gonna be hard. We kinda just wasted there's really no point in making that supply. Well, we'll use the supply hub in the future, I guess, against Peru. We have this one right here. And that'll help out. So we got to get to this supply hub. Oh, that's their capital. They have two up there. If we could control the Panama Canal, too. Well, that means that actually means war with the United States. We can boost our stability. Because now we have a construction uh, little deficit thing there. A little debuff to our construction. Let's do it. <clears throat> so the 9th of March, 1940. Begins our war with Colombia. We're doing it. Let's do a little excavation. Even though we only have oil. We can produce more oil. Oh, now we can do extensive conscription. And mobilize our economy. Waiting for this to get done. Do we get any political power? No, we don't. Oh yeah, the United States is going to cut off our steel. That's right. Uh, German Reich. That's what we're going to have to do. Altruism. One from Germany. One from Italy. That's not enough. Why are we not getting enough? Oh, because we don't have enough. All right, maybe we can do it from Brazil. We don't have enough convoys to fulfill the order. Chile? Nope, not enough. Um, anyone that we can get it over land it would just be chilly. Oh, now we can get it. Hold on. Yes, now we're getting enough. Okay. Okay, March. Oh, 1940, they have a, why is it so long? Why is it over a year? Does it usually take that long? Oh, uh, maybe I messed up. We didn't have to do, well, we did have to do all three of their 
provinces or whatever they are. Oh, they're going to have a whole year to prepare. All right, that's fine. That gives us time to prepare, too. Ready's our population for war. Yep, military use. We're going to be pulling out some more manpower. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hello. Sixty-seven. Unfulfilled import requests. Mm, that's fine. We're still we're still okay. All right, we're gonna go extensive conscription now. Uh -oh, we get to pull out seventy more men. We're gonna get one more division. <laughs> We could make the division smaller. They could reduce the number of battalions in a division. And therefore have more divisions. Oh nice, 1.5. Or 1500 I should say. Military youth. Uh, what else can we build here? I guess we build... Start building some fortifications. Around our border. Makes it easy to defend. Easier to defend. How's it going over in the uh, Far East? Oh yeah, Japan's gonna... Yeah, this is all... Men... Menguko and Menchuko are part of Japan. And it's... they own Korea as well. <clears throat> yeah, China's probably gonna fall. What's going on in the, uh, Europe? <clears throat> Poland's about to fall. Uh, the German Reich wants to resupply ships, okay, at our ports, sure. Yeah, sure thing, man. So I guess the thing is, <clears throat> if we join the Axis, then they m may send troops over here to help us fight America. Because if we join the Axis before we declare on Colombia, well, number one, they might send troops over here to help us fight Colombia. But then number two, that might drag the United States into war earlier. And so we open up a front. We, there's a possibility that we can open up a front. <clears throat> and we can take all of Central America... Mexico and get to the United States, maybe. Yeah, Germany's, Germany's running rampant over in Europe. We're over here just trying to make enough. Uh... All right, they want us to join the, the Axis, except Ecuador is joining the Axis. <laughs> Sure, we'll fight Ethiopia and we'll fight like all of Europe. Sure, man. Sure. We're not at war at anybody South America, right? No. We're at war with these three over here, but I don't think they can. I don't think they can make their way over.
Um. Yeah, I guess we just get this. Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not exactly helping out. <laughs> There's no way we're getting over there. This is March of 1940, so we still have a lot of time. Probably should have went to Peru. And then we could have done Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay. And at that point, we'd probably be able to square up against Brazil. Nanjing fell. Yeah, China's, China's going to be donezo. And that'll be hard for Russia. Eh. I mean, they kinda, they're kind of holding off. We'll see. It's still early. It's still early in the war. France is done. Yeah, I mean, that's how it goes. I'm surprised Slovakia is still around. Usually they get uh, consumed earlier. Is Norway... Norway still Norway? Well, not for long. All right, we got eleven divisions. We're gonna we're gonna have a couple more divisions. What is here? The German Reich has a hundred planes here for some reason. All right. Oh, you know what we should have made? Yeah. We should make a dockyard. Should have made one a while ago. Modify government. Partial mobilization. It's going to give us more factories here to build faster. Alright, we'll do technology sharing so we get one more research slot. Assembly line. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we just keep doing. There we go. Just keep doing infantry equipment for now. Why do we keep doing it? It's because we're gonna burn through. I mean, we got twenty. We got almost twenty thousand in the stockpile, but you you burn through it. As the war goes on, as any any fighting goes on whatsoever, uh, your infantry is like this. Just this is just encompasses like bullets, like you know, magazines, mines, grenades, you know, whatever, whatever you would give your infantry. So, whenever they attack, defend, you know, do whatever in war, you burn through infantry equipment. So even though we'll have like. You know, 22,000 stockpiled here. We're, we're going to be going to war in a minute here. All right, here we go. Let's do it, man. Colombia has joined the war. Colombia. Maximum attrition. Uh, we're going to do construction, I think. And we got another one of these. Let's do... Yeah, let's do infantry anti-tank. Uh, 
So we gotta push through. We gotta open up this front. And... We're not doing too well here. We are not doing well. What do they have? Oh, they have four units. No artillery, it's just infantry and horses. Cavalry. Infantry and cavalry. Oh, we're 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 losing. What the fuck? How did that happen? Okay, wait. We may have a chance to encircle. We're pushing them back. We're pushing them back. This is good. I think the Germans are helping us. I think they're helping us with air support. I think we, I think we have air support and they don't. All right, we need to open, we need to open the front line up more because we have like too many guys, too many divisions stacked up. <clears throat> and the more we can spread them out, easier it is for us to get around the backside of them. We can get to Bogota. So I think actually, the United States does not want to join the war right now. Because we're part of the Axis. We can do service by requirement next. So we get more manpower. Actually, yeah, we should do that because we're going to need the manpower to... Um, Right, let's do support equipment. <clears throat> we need the manpower to have a garrison. Oh, here we go. Is this a separate thing here? No. All right. Yeah, we want to open up the front line here. Oh, German infantry division has landed, <clears throat> landed in Ecuador to help us out. Hell yeah, here we go. Oh my God. All right. Germans are helping us out here. For some unknown reason. <laughs> Truly. Actually, they kind of would have a use for us. Did they do a naval landing? No, no, no. They snuck. Um, for the oil that we could provide. Oh, we don't need to see any of that. Excellent. Yep, convoys. Uh, war support. No. Our war support is still pretty low. And our stability is incredibly low. Uh, weekly stability. Yeah, let's do that. We need to get our stability up. Is there any way to circle around? No, there isn't. And our supply here is not terrible. Not exactly terrible. I guess the Colombians have planes? Is 
So I, I think we want to go Venezuela next. Actually, I'm not sure. If we do Venezuela, then these three are free to uh, move through their territory and attack. So I think we just we'll hit a stalemate in the middle of Venezuela. I think we want to go Peru next. And I think we want to avoid dragging Brazil in northern South America. Uh-oh. Our units are on the retreat. <clears throat> Medellin. Are we going to take Medellin? Uh, let's get the recon companies. We should get some factories from here. Some military factories. We'll start making support equipment, and then we can have support roles, I guess. Who's not delivering? Uh, the German Reich. Uh, United States, you want to send us some stuff? Production self effects slowed down dramatically over the last few days. The workers have declared a strike on all war production, demanding peace and bread. Make propaganda here as are the people still willing to work. Um... Japan, United States, none, Chile, none, Japan, and Germany? What do you mean we won't be able to construct any buildings? Oh, because of our stability. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's fine. We're not actually constructing any fucking buildings. We're just making forts. All right, Colombia. It's over, man. Soviet Union claims best of Arabia. Ah. What's the supply looking like here? Yeah, it's a little rough. We took their airfield. So that's something. We have to get Bogota. We get Bogota and Medellin. Wow, they're not even close to capitulating, huh? There's been no way for us to to sneak around. I mean, what if we push here? The United Kingdom has decrypted our ciphers and started to make information gained from reading our messages while available to field commanders. They'll get various combat bonuses against us for 30 days. Our cipher has been broken. Okay. Oh, there are three. Okay, we have to encircle. I didn't even notice. These are British divisions here. Yeah, we gotta encircle them. We're pushing the Colombians. We're pushing the Colombians back. Give me one more here. Give me all three here. Uh, 
Oh, you bastards. Now we're cut off. Oh no, this, this could be bad. Is this New Zealand? Okay. Uh, shit. Yeah. Uh, we need to... No, no, no. We need to reconnect with our troops. You two, get back here. We're about to lose two divisions. Where are the Ger Who is this? Hungary. Get your butts up here, boys. Oh, we took... <gasps> Ooh. Alright, don't... We're not making anything new right now. Oh, we cut off this British division. Oh, they're about to lose some. Uh, no, cancel this. Cancel this. We need the men for garrison. We just wiped out that British division. Actually, did they or did they move through? Is Venezuela involved at all? Oh, Venezuela's... Venezuela's about to join us. Oh. Interesting. Alright, let's expand the new... Uh, offensive line here. And begin the final push. I don't know why they're asking me. The war keeps changing. The name of the war keeps changing. Call it Bulgaria. 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 The bulge. Call the bulge in. Uh, we need to build a railway. Oh, we have a bunch of... Uh we got a bunch of, uh, things now. So we could, theoretically... So you... You wanna send us something? What is going on? Oh, because we only have a certain number of convoys. We need to make more convoys. That's what's... That's what's holding us back. And we need to we need to get this railway up and running. So we have supply. It's coming. Railroad's coming. The Greeks. Greece is fun. <clears throat> I like playing Greece. I like playing Greece and Turkey. They're both fun. They can be super impactful. All right, railway's done, and now see how the color changed there, lightly. Now it's a lighter blue. We have better. Uh, we have better supply in this zone now. All right. It looks like the British abandoned the Colombians. Honestly, all of you. Yeah, see, so we burned through almost 10,000 infantry, probably about 10,000 infantry equipment once this is all said and done. Yeah, just push. Just push, guys. No, no, no. Nine divisions. Just go. There's British, British tanks have arrived. Drive them back to the sea. Alright, we're gonna get recon, we're gonna get engineers. We're gonna have to chill. 
Once we take Colombia, we have to chill and and get a hold of the country. Are we winning? Are you winning, son? <clears throat> oh, we got the German tanks coming in here. The German tanks rolling through the South American jungles. really nothing for us to nothing for us to get here for our uh, special forces oh infantry specialist okay we could get that oh come on guys we no longer get the effects from nationalism Yeah, we have to we have to pause after this and try and get our stability up. So the civilian population doesn't rebel against us here. Alright. Ten divisions against their three. Their four. Whatever. We should be able to take this. There's no way. How are they not? Oh, they're super close to capitulating. Yeah. How are they holding us off? Oh, because they keep cycling. <clears throat> they keep cycling fresh troops in. Damn. We were going to win that. Oof, the supply there is terrible. What is this? Oh, Marines. Italian Marines. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the boys have really gone up to help us out here. You guys dropped a lot of, uh, a lot of infantry. It's kind of a lot. <clears throat> and we cannot break through here. I wonder if their sights are on the Panama Canal. Damn, man, I was really hoping we'd be through with this by now. Japan is going to attack. Is Japan part of the... No, it's not part of the Axis yet. Japan is going to pull Pearl Harbor at some point. This one New Zealand division is holding things up. Yeah, we need the military governorship in this occupied territory. <laughs> guys, we gotta make a... We gotta make a push here, guys. You gotta try. Oh, we straight up lost divisions. Oh, because we don't have enough manpower to replace them. Uh-oh. All right. We got to just chill. Who joined the war? Soviet Union. Oh, okay. Hmm. I wonder if it would have been better if we went communist. Probably not. I probably would have been... 
the same ish and i guess if anything yeah here we go japan japan's starting shit if anything, the Soviets would not have sent troops to help us. Not as many. And now Japan's joined the Axis. We lost another company. Uh, I mean, this is kind of useless for us. Oh, what can we do? Fuck it, let's do rockets. <laughs> I don't know, let's do something crazy. We're running out of men. The Axis are... They're trying to help us out here, but we just cannot break through these divisions. And I feel like all of our manpower is going towards... Yeah, I mean, our manpower is going towards reinforcements. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to beat us, and we can't beat them. Ideally... Uh, we don't have paratroopers unlocked. Oh, we can't even make this. We just don't have enough. Yeah, I know, I know. Um... I, mean, I guess we could build another supply hub up here. We don't really have much else to do. I was thinking we get paratroopers. If we could drop paratroopers on Cartagena. Cartagena, however you pronounce it. Um. Oh, is the United States... United States join the Allies. Alright. Well, here we go. Well. I wonder if... I wonder if it would have been better if we... Oh, what's going on off the coast here? U.S. submarines versus, uh, U.S. submarines are attacking our convoys. Two troop convoys. Well, that's no good. I wonder if it would have been better to scrap all our infantry divisions and make, um, and make horse divisions, cavalry. Make like, yeah, maybe, maybe that's, uh, I mean, you have to make them small because we don't have a whole lot of manpower. Do like that. Maybe. And then we would just been faster. I mean, it's the same, it's essentially the same combat power as the standard infantry division. We're just faster. We needed to get... The thing was, we needed to get around... 
the Colombian army and got into Cartagena before before their soldiers could push back. Now it's I mean it's essentially a lost cause at this point. Um We can build war support, yeah. Import allied propaganda films. Yeah, I mean, we can boost war support, but our stability is super low. Um, And we just have zero... The thing is, we have zero manpower. We just cannot... Yeah, sure. I'll sign a pack of non-aggression with Manchuko. Yeah, sure, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, we can't... We can't even reinforce our own division, so we're losing... We're losing our own divisions when, when we lose, you know, when the enemy attacks us or something. Like, now we're down to five. We're going to lose our entire army. All right. Well, <clears throat> I think that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. I think we are. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the path to victory here would have been. If it's even possible. Maybe it would have been better to go for Peru first. I feel like the Peruvian army was bigger. Um, although they had less manpower and they're a bit further away, it might've been better to go Peru and then maybe would have gotten to Bolivia. Maybe it would have been better to go communist. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, well, that's going to be the end. We're going to do another episode tomorrow. Um, I think we're just going to pick another country because we're kind of just in it. We're in kind of a shitty spot. It's kind of the problem. Like, some of these countries are just so small that they don't... Um, they can't, really can't directly affect any conflict whatsoever other countries are like like i don't know maybe argentina would have been a better start i don't know how much manpower do they have yeah i mean they have they have just a larger population to pull from we gotta find the right right size country we might just we'll spin the wheel again tomorrow and do something else like, even, like, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, like, these, these are fun to play, because you can directly affect World War II, at least in Europe, or in, in Asia, um, and they, for the most part, have a decent size, same with Turkey, and, like I said, Greece, Greece, you kind of have to rush, so you don't get messed up, same with F France, is fun, although well, France is, like, a major power, um, Spain, Portugal. I don't think I've ever done Portugal. Oh, they got okay. I guess they got a good little chunk of chunk of guys there. Yeah, we'll see. We'll spin the wheel again, see what we get. I mean, if it's a small country, um, we'll probably just spin the wheel another time. Oh damn, maybe Venezuela would have been. I just, I, I think the one country <clears throat> that we got, that we picked there, that we got stuck with, um, yeah, they have zero manpower as well. Um, yeah, we just got stuck with, you know, we just didn't have a whole lot of manpower. And there's not really much that we can do from here, unfortunately.
There's no way for us to produce... ...to produce any more... ...men. Oh, we got a little boost there, but it's just gonna go to... It's just gonna go to garrisons and making sure our five divisions... Yeah, see, immediately goes away. Anyone that comes... Anybody... Any guy that turns 18 is immediately sent to the front lines. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what that's saying. And we're losing divisions, so... All right, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be playing, again, we'll be playing this tomorrow. We'll do another episode tomorrow. We'll pick a new country. We'll do better. Uh, I think. Hopefully. And then uh, I'll play this some more on stream on time. I, I have, like, over 300 hours in this game. I've played it a lot. And, um, you know, I barely... I probably have played less than half the countries available in the game. Even though there are a lot of small ones, but including the big ones, like I've never played, I've never played Germany. Uh, I've played Italy maybe a handful of times. I played France a few times. I've only played United Kingdom like twice, maybe. Uh, I like Canada, United States. I've done only a couple times. They're fun. China, I've done a few times. Japan, I think I did once. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a bunch that, like I said, I enjoy like the mid sized stuff, and I enjoy being like in the Balkans, um, or the Middle East. I don't know, because I, I feel like you're just you're you're like almost right in the middle of the action with that stuff, but you can usually like affect the war in a, in a meaningful way and change things. Anyways, love you all. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great night. I will see you all very, very soon.